What's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna be seeing what happens when you put a foreign disc in the Wii Mini. And as you can see, I got the console right here. Uh, basically it's a stripped down version of the Wii. And I actually bought this thing from eBay a few weeks ago. I'll throw a link up on the screen right now if you wanna check that video out. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of buying stuff from eBay and unboxing it. But as you can see, uh, it's just a regular Wii, plays regular Wii games. And it has this uh, disc tray right here. Instead of, instead of like an automatic disc tray, you actually have to pop it open manually, which is one of the reasons why, why it was cheaper. But yeah, before we get into this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And also hit that join button down below as well if you want to support the channel monetarily. And if you join my level 3 membership, you'll actually get your name put on the screen like the people below. Uh, so go ahead and do that if you want to. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video. So like I said, putting a foreign disc into the Wii Mini. And so I have a bunch of different games to try, but the first thing we have to do is try just a regular Wii game, make sure it works. So if you're not familiar with the Wii Mini, uh, like I said, it's basically a stripped down version of the Wii. It still plays regular Wii games, but it doesn't have internet, so stuff like that. So if you look at my Wii screen right now, um, it's pretty barren. There's no channels or anything because you can't connect to the internet, so how are you gonna get channels? I mean, there's probably some way to get channels, and but I really haven't explored it that much. Um, but if this game works, it should pop up right here. Now, I actually have not played this game in a long time, so hopefully it does work. Yeah, so Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I don't know, what year was this? Alright, so if you look close, you probably can't see it, but it says 2009. So this thing is pretty dang old. Let's go ahead and boot it up real quick and just verify that our Wii is actually working properly. Alright, so it does appear to be working. Uh, we'll go ahead and exit now, uh, just so we don't waste all our time watching this intro and stuff. Um, but yeah, so the Wii game is working. That gives me a little bit of hope. I don't know if I should have ejected it that early, but I will. So we got our Wii game. Next up, we'll try our PlayStation games. So let me go ahead and get those. All right, so PlayStation games. We'll start out with the PS1, Crash Bash. I pretty much use this as my, as my PS1 game almost every time. Such a fun game. To be honest, I actually haven't played it in a long time now. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, I mean, clearly we're probably, it's probably not gonna read the disc, but we're hoping that it gives us some kind of cool error message or like sometimes uh, just un unable to read the disc. Check the Wii operations manual for help troubleshooting. Dude, why is it flashing? It's like flashing in and out, so you can't actually read it. <laughs> that's that's annoying. Um, but there are some games that a lot of times they'll play like a some sort of splash screen, like a little video or something. Um, it's just kind of cool to see see how these other consoles treat foreign games. So next up for the PS2, um, NHL Hits 2002. I haven't played this game in forever, but this is. I believe this is made made by Midway, and if you're familiar with Midway games, they're basically just absolutely ridiculous like sports games and stuff, and they just like, they allow pretty much anything to happen. So for example, if you're playing NHL hits, you can basically skate around and punch people and stuff like that, and pretty much whatever you want to do. Ooh, that sounded really bad. You guys probably couldn't hear on the mic, but it like, it sounded like it was scratching the disc for a second. Um, hopefully my disc is still okay. I don't know what in there would actually scratch it, but it is kind of cool to watch the laser in here. You just skirt back and forth real quick, especially when you open the disc tray while it's reading. Um, you can see it moving around and stuff. So PS1 and PS2 game gave me the same sort of message, which is pretty typical. Usually when a PS1 game gives a certain message on a console, usually the, usually the PS2 does the same thing. Um, just, I guess because they're the same same type of same type of disc, I'm assuming. Now here we got Call of Duty Ghost. Now this is a Blu-ray disc, so this one starts getting a little bit tricky. Um, and to be honest, the weird thing is I don't even know what you consider a Wii disc. Like a Wii disc is not a DVD disc. It's not a not a Blu-ray. It's just like I don't know what Nintendo calls it. This is making a weird noise. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm trying to put the microphone close to it. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> An error has occurred. Come on, focus, please. It says an error has occurred. Turn off the turn the console off, then press the open button and remove the disc. So this one is so bad that you have to turn the console off before you remove the disc. That's that's weird. It almost sounded like it was spinning. I don't know how to emulate this, but spinning and then getting stuck as it was spinning. That's what it sounded like. I obviously I did not see it because the disc tray was closed. Let's go ahead and try to turn this thing back on now so that was that was odd I don't know if you guys could hear that when I flipped the microphone around um, but it just it sounded bad all the way around so I guess what we got to do at the end of this video is test out the Wii game again to make sure the Wii game still works 
And yeah, so PS4, I imagine I'll do the same thing as the PS3 because it's also a Blu-ray disc. At least, you know, I'm assuming, but sometimes the PS3 and the PS4 discs do do different things. But it's definitely doing the same thing right now. So if you give it like 10 seconds, it's probably going to pop up with that like screen of death and tell me to turn the console off again. So we'll just, oh, yep, there it is. So it gave me the exact same like screen of death. Not even error an error reading it, it's just it says turn off the console. This is so bad that you need to turn it off. It's kind of funny to be honest. So PS5, uh, now the PS5 is also Blu-ray, Blu -ray, I believe. So um, I imagine it's going to do the same thing again. But this is why we're here testing these out. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, so we're testing it out to so I can inform you guys and make you make sure you guys know that you cannot play a PS5 game on the Wii. At least that's what I'm assuming. We haven't actually seen it yet. Um, but it's making the same noise right now, so I guess we're just going to await our destiny right now and wait for this thing to uh, give me the black screen of death. Yep, so there it is. I think it actually came a little bit quicker this time. But interesting. I wonder if it'll do the same thing for like the Series X and Xbox One game. I think those are I think those are Blu-ray, so we might get a similar result there. All right, so Xbox games up next. Go ahead and turn my Wii back on since it made me turn it off for like the third time now. NFL Fever 2002. I don't think I've ever actually played this game, but I just randomly have it. I actually I bought an original Xbox from somewhere like three or four years ago, and it came with like ten games, and yeah, this is one of those random games that came with it, and I just have not played it. So this sounds a little bit better. It sounds like it's actually spinning around. I know you guys probably cannot hear it, um, just because obviously the mic is not right next to it. It's not showing anything when I'm outside the disc channel, so I guess you have to go on the disc channel to actually get the result. So basically the same thing as the PS1 and PS2, where it says unable to read the disc. So next up we have Assassin's Creed 3 for the 360. Now this is actually one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games that, to be honest, that could be because it's one of the only ones I've played. I, I've actually played a little... Oh, that was bad. I've played bits and bits here and there of different Assassin's Creed games, but Assassin's Creed 3 is like the only one I've actually ever finished. So maybe that's why it's my favorite <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Um, but I, I thought it was fun. I know... I recall people in the past saying they didn't like Assassin's Creed 3, but um, I liked it. I thought it was fun. So... Basically the same result as PS1, PS2, and Xbox. So I'm thinking that Xbox One and Xbox Series X are probably going to be similar to the PS4, PS5, and PS3. And so here is Cyberpunk. Let me try to get this open. So I actually only have the second disc in here, but that'll do. We can try that out. Um, I'm not sure where the first disc is because it's not in my Series X. I had a different game in my Series X that I had to take out. Maybe it's in the regular Cyberpunk case. I have a regular case and then I also have this steel book right here. So maybe for some reason I'll put it in the, the regular case. Yep, so it's doing the same thing again as the other Blu-rays did. Hopefully you can hear that now. It's making some real weird noises. So I'm assuming it's about to give me the black screen of death, but yeah, there it is. All right, so the classic routine of turning off the console and then ejecting. I'm just going to put it right there so it's a little bit easier to put in. So now let's try out our Series X game. And I don't think I'm going to go through my rant this time. I always talk about how um, it's really annoying how <laughs> Xbox does a naming convention. I mean, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. I mean, if, if you knew absolutely nothing about consoles, you would have absolutely no idea what order those consoles were. You, you would assume that they're regular... You, I guess you would assume that the Xbox is the first one, and then after that, like, who knows? Xbox One, Xbox 360. Actually, if you didn't know anything, you probably thought the Xbox One was the first one. And then 360 is probably the most recent one, just because the number is the highest. All right, so, yep, as I predicted, same thing again. So it seems to have a trend of, uh, you know, one thing happens for Blu-ray discs, and then another thing happens for, like, regular DVDs and stuff. And then, of course, Wii games actually work properly. So next up, we actually have the rest of our Nintendo games. So we have Sonic Riders for the GameCube. Now this is a really interesting one because since this is, a, this is a Wii Mini, as I said, it's got stripped down features, or they stripped down some features from the regular Wii. And one of those features that they stripped down is GameCube games, supposedly. So I'm going to be interested to see 
what it does here. My guess is that it'll actually recognize that it is a GameCube game, and then it'll just tell me it sucks for you, you bought the wrong console, which I'm sure is an error message that a lot of people saw. Oh, it just says unable to read the disc. That's interesting. Huh. So to be honest, I thought it was going to pop up and say, you can't play GameCubes on this, this uh, console by regular Wii, but I guess they don't discriminate. They just lump it in with the rest of the uh, the non-working discs. Um, so Nintendo Land, I, I don't know what kind of disc you call this because I don't think it's a Blu-ray. I don't think it's a DVD. I, it's just whatever proprietary format Nintendo wanted to use. So I don't think it's going to do the, the little spinny thing of death and give me the black screen of death. I think it might just do the... Oh, nope. It's making that noise again. So I think it's going to give me the black screen of death. <laughs> Seems to be a trend, even though this is not a not a Blu-ray disc, I don't think. All right, so yep, you can already tell it's a black screen of death. I'm really hoping that doing this is not messing up the disc tray of the console because it just it sounds so sketchy in there. It's not a good sound. All right, so now that we've tried a bunch of the major consoles, let's try some of the just like random di discs here and there. So this first one is one that I'm not actually sure I've ever tried on any console before, but it's like a what is it? It's got... It, I don't know what this is. It holds saves? I, organize and transfer your stuff. So I, get, I think this was used to transfer stuff from your PC to your PSP maybe? Uh, or maybe you put it in your PC and you could somehow use it to organize your files from your PSP? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm assuming based on the other trends, it's yeah, I'm just going to tell me unable to read the disc, but it that one didn't even try to spin at all. The other one's like, I think at least attempted. To be honest, it might not have tried because the disc was so small. That's probably what it was. The disc was so small, it didn't even, it didn't even bring the laser inside. I just left it out there and it was like, oh yeah, you don't have a disc in here. Probably the same thing that happened to the GameCube and that's why I didn't even notice it was a GameCube game. Hmm, sketchy. All right, so Sega Dreamcast game. I believe the Sega Dreamcast game is the one that will sometimes pop up with like a, it's not a music file, I think it's like a just a file that says you're playing this on the wrong console, and nope, just unable to read. So I guess the, the Wii Mini keeps it nice and simple, they just tell you it's unable to read. Except when you're using a, a disc that's like way too powerful, then it tells you that you better turn your console off before you break everything. So let's try a, This is a PC game. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Dude, I'm a huge fan of Roller Coaster Tycoon, but I haven't played it in years. I used to play when I was a kid. It's been forever since they, since they made a new game. I don't think they ever made a fourth one, did they? I don't, I don't know. So same thing again. Becoming a trend. I think it's already been a trend. <laughs> um, so I bet you can guess... I bet you can guess what the Sega Saturn error message is going to be. <laughs> Since it's not a Blu-ray disc, it'll probably be, um, go read your manual, buddy. But I guess let's just confirm. We're already here, so why not? You can chan you can take your chances and skip this part of the video if you want to, but there you go. Same thing. We got our, uh, our last, last one here. We have a movie to try out. Man, I'm gonna scratch up this disc because I can't get it on here. So we have the Peanuts movie. This actually has a DVD and a Blu-ray in here. So this is like the definitive test. The DVD will probably give me that that same error message. And then the Blu-ray will probably give me the black screen of death. At least that's what I'm assuming. I guess we'll see now. This is another one, one of those ones where not even try to read it. It spun like one time and then it just kicked me out. It's kind of mean to be honest. Alright, so this Blu-ray disc. Come on. I'm just trying to watch some movies on my Wii Mini, man. Come on. I paid 99 bucks for this thing and I can't even get a... can't even watch a movie. And it's funny because you can't, you can't download anything from the internet because it doesn't connect to the internet so you literally cannot watch anything on here. Not Netflix, not anything. I think they actually dis disabled Netflix from the regular Wii as well, which I don't know if anybody was actually watching Netflix on the Wii, but um, yeah, console of, or screen of death. 
Not the first time I've seen that. But, uh, yeah. Alright guys, so as usual, I have a surprise. So I've got this Crash Bandicoot game for the Game Boy Advance. And we're just going to kind of slide it in the tray. And see what it does. Oh, it doesn't actually fit. A lot of these times, are, these games are actually thin enough that you can close the disc tray. And then it'll try to read it. I wonder if there's a latch somewhere that I can push that'll kind of trigger it to uh, do its thing. Maybe? Oh man. I can't get it to trigger. I don't really want to sit it on the laser or else it's going to destroy the laser. But sometimes you can actually get a game to fit into a case like this or, or a, a console like this and it'll start it'll start spinning this thing and this thing will start hitting the, hitting the game and it'll let the game will actually spin in there. Uh, but I can actually get it to fit in there. Maybe let's try a Switch game. Actually, never mind. My Switch games are not really accessible to me right now. So I'm not going to try a Switch game. But there you go, guys. That's what happens when you put a foreign disc in the Wii Mini. Um, as we saw, it wasn't quite as amusing as some other consoles. A lot of other consoles will, you know, uh, give you some good error message, some good some good music, some good sound. Some, sometimes it'll pull up, like, data files. And you can, like, search through the data um, on certain consoles and, and PCs and stuff. So that's some, some cool stuff when that happens. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe as well. And if you want to support the channel monetarily, go ahead and hit that join button. And if you actually join my level three membership, you'll get your name put on the screen like the people right now. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.